Holy the shy video from Dom is out. Really? Really? All right. Are we going to watch it? Are we going to watch it? Let's watch it. Let's pull it up. The true story of the shy. Can't believe I have to make a fucking video on the. All right. Base, 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 base. The shy, man. All right. All right. Let's watch this. All right. The shy is the greatest. <laughs> 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 I got AI Dom to do it instead. What's up guys and welcome to my video on the shy. This video was a long time coming and the reason I'm making this video full disclaimer is because of a bet that I lost with Kadrill in Worlds of 2023 where I bet that BLG was going to be Weibo in the upper bracket semifinals. Well, there's only one bracket because it's Worlds, you know, A plus job, right? No double limb during Worlds. Weibo's a good team. You can say it. It doesn't hurt. It's not gonna... Okay. You okay, look. You can say it. Weibo is a good team. Clip it. Compared to the no. dog no. number one seed <laughs> from but. North America. It's always but. That's it's always but. Saying. It's okay. They'll beat yes. Genji. If they, okay, here's, here's the deal. If they win against Genji or BLG and make the finals, will you say they're a good team? Yes. 100%. Okay. What? Will you, of course. Will you, will you give me an apologetic speech? Yeah, I'll write you a fucking speech. Thank I'll you. make my own fucking... I'll fucking make a 10-minute video sucking the shy's... Perfect. Saying why he's the best top laner in the entire world. That'll be my bet. Okay, deal. Deal. Dude, hold on. Let me, uh, Kajal's calling me. He needs to rub it in. All right, hold okay, on. Okay. Look, hey, sorry. Look, OMG is disbanding. Hey, sorry. OMG Say sorry. OMG is disbanding. I just Say sorry. Game five. Say sorry. Say sorry. <laughs> Say sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, bro. I'm sorry, the shy. You actually are just him. You inted for five years straight on purpose just to smurf in this series. Finally, right, bro. We found do, do I have to make that stupid ass video that I promised? Yeah, make it. And because Weibo won, I have to make this video sucking off the shy for 20 minutes. Nice. The Shy first appeared in High Elo Korean solo queue in season four at the age of 14, which makes him essentially one of the first top lane prodigies that we've had in league history. In a time where most players were famous for playing champions like Maokai, Shivana, Renekton, Mundo, and even Lulu Top, the Shy gained attention for his highly mechanically demanding champion pool, consisting of champs like Yasuo, Nidalee, Jace, but most prominently Riven. This was a time where mechanics on Riven were relatively unexplored. Most High Elo Riven players were just learning about the fast queue Riven mechanic, which is still done to this day. If you don't know what the fast queue is, it's a mechanic done by right-clicking the ground immediately after you queue on Riven, which allows you to auto-attack roughly 35 to 40% faster than normal. Most Riven players being able to execute this was enough to be considered a good Riven player at the time, but to be able to pull off Riven against the best players in the world in Korean solo queue, the Shy needed to optimize Riven to an even higher degree, which is why he invented his own Riven combo, which later became known as the Shy combo. The Shy combo was a one-shot Riven combo used to execute squishy targets in under a second without them being able to react. The combo was done by casting the first part of Riven's R during her E animation, which was quickly followed by flashing on a target and pressing W. Once the target was stunned, the Shy would auto attack one time, then cancel that auto attack animation with Hydra, which would then allow Riven to recast R2 and Q right after. If done perfectly, the enemy champion would take lethal damage in the 0.75 second Riven stun. By being so proficient at this combo, the Shy became known worldwide in the League of Legends scene. Now, not everyone nice. knew precisely what the Shy combo was. Most people understood that it was some type of Riven combo that was extremely advanced, and if done quickly, you would get one shot and you wouldn't be able to react to it. But most people didn't know the specific order of abilities or anything like that. But that's not important. What's important is that the Shy was now known around the world. People knew of this guy in Korea who was considered the best Riven player. And if you played against him, he was going to one shot you before you knew what was happening. And this term became really big. People were using using the term the shy combo even in a comedic sense people would play vegar and they would qr you or they would play nunu and just r in the bush and if they one shot you they would say Ooh, just... i just shy comboed him and that became the reach of this guy the shy had become a legend before he even played one competitive just, uh... game. at the age of 15 the shy was already it's just league of legends swifty macro WWE. he had became known for his the shy it's just combo the swifty macro guys. a high korean challenger player but the main problem that he faced when it came to competitive play was that he simply was too young to compete 
which is why at the age of 17 he finally was able to join IG as a substitute to Duke. When the Shy was signed in the summer of 2017 to bah. IG, it wasn't obvious how much he would actually get to play. Duke was still considered to be one of the best and most stable top laners in the world at that time, having just won Worlds in 2016 with SKT, and the Shy had very little competitive experience in any environment at all. Originally, IG took the sword and shield approach, where the Shy would play most of the aggressive carry top laners and Duke would play the weak side tanky champions. However, towards the end of the split, it became obvious that the team functioned better with the Shy in the top lane. From the Shy, the Riven one trick streamer that has since transitioned to pro player. Which is why IG chose to play with the Shy over Duke in the majority of their playoff series and ended up playing only with the Shy in Regional Gauntlet, where the team ended up losing narrowly to WE in a close five game series, causing them to miss Worlds. IG hit the ground running in the 2018 spring season with Jack the Shy you know. as the starter, and they were absolutely dominant. The team went 18 and one with a 37 to five game bah. score. However, the Shy was sidelined with a hand injury and wasn't able to play in playoffs. In summer split, IG once again Astro fisted the entire league with the Shy as a starter and went 18 and one once again. The one loss, however, was to RNG, who had just came off winning LPL in spring and also winning MSI, meaning that RNG was still considered by many to be the favorites for the league. Due to the insane record that IG had in the regular season, they were seeded directly into the semifinals of playoffs, where they were able to beat JDG 3-2, sending them directly to finals. Unfortunately, in the finals, IG once again fell to RNG 3-2, with the Shy playing four Fucking out of RNG, games, mate. of which he won two. The good news, though, for IG was that the placement was high enough to directly qualify them to the World Championship as the second seed of oh, LPL. Okay. Let's be honest, people barely watch the LPL nowadays, so think about how few people watched the LPL back in 2018. People didn't know that the Shy had just went 36 and two in game score. For the general league population, most people first watched the Shy play a League of Legends game at Worlds in 2018, and the Shy was about to show the world what he was made of. IG began their World Championship in a fairly easy group. They got drafted into Group D, which had Fnatic, the EU LCS champions, but the other two teams were G-Rex, the third seed from Taiwan, which was starting to struggle at that point. Taiwan didn't have any teams actually advance to the group stage at this tournament, and 100 Thieves that were imploding. 100 Thieves mainly made it off of their points from the spring split, but since then, Cody Sun had been benched for Rakara, and there was issues with Meteos leading to his benching as well. IG ended up going five and one Bro, in the group stage video, alongside man. Fnatic, but due to their one-to-one -one head to head score, they ended up having to play a tiebreaker. Since IG had lost the Fnatic with the Shy and had won with Duke, IG ended up fielding Duke in the tiebreaker match. Fnatic went on to have one of their best games of the tournament, taking down IG with pop-off performances from Caps and Broxa. This would end up being a critical result for IG as their second place finish in the group stage meant that they would face against one of the tournament favorites KT in the quarterfinals. IG took a commanding 2-0 lead in the series Oof. versus the number one seed from the LCK with the Shy performing consistently on both Urgot and Scion. And KT Rolster will have to reverse sweep to remain in this series as IG look indomitable. In game number three, the Shy pulled out his Fiora as a counter pick to Smeb's Aurelia and had side lane pressure the entire game. The game came down to a base race at 41 minutes where the Shy was one auto attack away from split pushing down the Nexus. Here, right now, Ming taken down to half. It's Shy versus Smeb at the base. At the same time, Otto's gonna be taken very low. You count, barely gonna be kept alive. Score taken down to one corner. Smeb's nearly gonna be killed now as well. Def taken so low. The flame call is not able to find him. Def goes to the killing spree. It's the Shy still in the base. It's KT looking to try to stand and fight if they can. The Shy has made his way onto the inhibitor turret, onto the Nexus turret. They're gonna be taken down. Fighting Smeb, bro. KT still marching. It's a base race. The Shy's on the blue Nexus. KT's on the red. Who's gonna win? The Shy will not. And KT takes it to game four. Holy crap. After three games of objectively being the better top laner, the Shy was benched in game number four for Duke. Duke will be substituting in for the Shy. That is a big move here, plus Duke brings so much experience. This was a crazy decision to most people watching the series. I, I, I wonder, I wonder what happened, bro. I wonder what happened. Did, 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 did the Shy just go backstage and say, fuck all of you. <laughs> all right, you're not playing.
the shy better than Smep, it felt like IG played better with the shy. A year later, a translator revealed on Reddit the reason for the shy's benching in game number oh. four. As it turns out, the shy locked in Fiora against his coach's wishes. So his <laughs> game four benching was actually a punishment handed out I forgot about this time shit. during a world's best of five. This is what makes the shy such a legend. He locked in a champion against his coach's wishes in game number three, got behavior benched in game number four, and was so damn good that his coach had to sub him back in in game five in order to beat the second best team in the entire world bro he played scion here bro he played scion what on what planet did fanatic think that he doesn't play scion <laughs> While IG was dispatching of KT, the other Asian teams were dropping like flies. C9 3-0'd the Africa Freaks, Fnatic stomped EDG, and G2 pulled off the biggest upset in world history by beating Uzi and RNG. Perks, man. Perks goes gold with the Hourglass. They may have just done it. G2 have just dismantled RNG, and they're going to make their way to the semi-final. The G2 dynasty will be defined by taking down RNG. The general sentiment at the time was that this was finally the year for the West to win a world championship. All that was left was three Western teams and IG. The semifinals between IG and G2 were looking to be an extremely competitive matchup, especially because G2 had just beat a team that had been better than IG for the entire year up until that point. I thought I was going to be the only one going with G2 here. I also got them 3-2 in this series. This was the series, however, that the Shy would solidify himself as the best top laner in the entire world. The Shy would go on to show the breadth of his champion pool by playing in a Kali game. Well, looks good, by one. the way. They're trying to make some sort of a final stand here as G2 have to find their fight. Perk's going to be taken very low. Ding already grabbed the kill down onto Yarnin in the back line. But Long grabs the kill onto within here too. Wonder trying to stand and make some sort of a defense, but everyone else is already... One of wow. the best top lane Jace games ever played in game number two. Very long. Remember, he and then following it up with an insane Aatrox game in which he made his most iconic play ever. The Q3 heard around the world. They punched their dick in. What? Oh. <laughs> Ticket. An extreme show of dominance here. <laughs> With this 3 0, there was only one team left standing between the Shy and a world championship. The team that had already beat them twice in the group stage, Fnatic. People believed that this time it would be different. It wasn't just because Fnatic had beaten IG in the group stage that gave Western fans hope. Fnatic had convincingly beat EDG in quarters and shit stomped C9 in semis. It really felt like C9 was the best possible matchup into IG, but the Shy shut that shit down quick. The Shy tore up Whippo. Ming and the Shy ganged Whippo so many times in game number Brother two, the and he ended up getting benched for Soaz in game number three. And that changed almost nothing about the series. IG swept Fnatic in finals. The Shy had went from being a streamer maining Riven to being the best top laner in the world on the best team in the world in a little over a year. I was the there, man. IG began 2019 just how they ended 2018, being one of the best teams in the LPL. They placed second in the regular season, but went on to have a dominant playoffs, winning the semifinals 3-1 and the finals 3-0 against JDG. From World 2018 to 2019 domestic title, 3-0, the 2019 Spring Champions. It really looked like we were in an era of oh, IG man. dominance that wasn't going to be stopped anytime soon. The most important thing to 
note about the Shy this split is that he really indexed into what his core strength was, which was being one of the best laning top laners in the entire world. He started playing Make mainly him. range bully top laners, and the top five most played champions he had this split were Urgot, Ryus, Kennen, Vladimir, and Nico. By winning the spring split, IG had qualified themselves to 2019 MSI. Due to the fact that they had just won Worlds six months prior, most people considered IG to be the favorites. Bro, even in the, the group tournament. stage, bro. IG had an absolutely dominant even in the group, group stage, stage bro. nine and one, including a 15 minute Ooh. win versus Korea's first seed SKT. Not since Bangkok Titans got crushed four years ago in Smash the world record! Holy Kleptomancy, what a broken room. And this first place finish sent them into the semifinals where they would face off against TL, who so IG free, had bro. previously already beaten twice. Everyone considered IG as massive favorites to win this match. <laughs> yes. Last longer than Fnatic did. You're looking at 89 minutes. Oh. I think it's going to be a 3 0, but just try to hold on. All right. Well, so Papa Smithy, the only one here calling a single game for Team Liquid in this best of five. I see if they can surprise us even more than that. <laughs> the main perceived advantage for IG versus TL was the fact that the meta at MSI had become a ranged carry top lane meta. The Oof, exact impact. meta that the Shy had dominated in within the LPL and a meta that impact was considered to be weakened. The Shy ended up winning every single lane phase versus impact, but overall IG was way less coordinated on the day. Ning had an awful individually, and IG was not able to pull off their high execution team comps like they normally did. It would be unfair to blame the Ning, Shy for this series. Ning and Balam were outclassed by TL on the day and with the old Fucking dog shit MSI format that was it with the old dog shit format IG was out of MSI getting 3-1 by TL unable to win another international title after returning to the LPL IG immediately began struggling in the summer split it was clear that the team was experiencing issues the shy was still playing generally well in most of the games but unlike his consistent performance at MSI there were some games where the shy was running it down regardless most of the underperformance oh, that IG is true bro on Ning and it just Dao occurred Lion. to me why double probably doesn't think Jackie love is good that's so fucking true by the way <laughs> Both players ended up being benched throughout the split, Ning for Leyen and Balan for Lucas, then Jin Lu, but the team still struggled. IG squeaked into playoffs as a sixth oh, seed in LPL. Toby's was night. The worst place bro, night. He was so good at Corky, bro. What happened to him? <laughs> that the team had since 2017 spring and boy this I'm one joking, had it in the back from the start that was a disaster of epic proportions coming in the bot side in playoffs ig got 3-0 clapped by lng but still ended up making it to worlds through the regional gauntlet which they only qualified for because of their championship points from spring to take down the reigning world champions in the first round of play even though ig had struggled in summer they still went into the 2019 world championship as defending world champs and one of the most respected teams. IG would go 4-2 and two in the group stage, losing twice to Damwon, but easily beat the Korean second seed, Griffin, in the quarterfinals. Once again, Fucking IG sword, went man. in the semifinals is... of Worlds, looking strong. Bro, just look look at this, bro. This is, Once again, this is just fucking... This is a war crime, isn't it, man? Tovi's playing Sion, and Sword is on Jace. Like, that's just a war crime, man. Like, that's just a war crime. Like, Griffin legit were good enough to win Worlds, bro. They were legit good enough to win Worlds. They had Doran on the bench. Like, this was so disturbing, bro. Like, they... Fuck CV Max? What do you mean, fuck CV Max? CV Max wasn't even there, bro. CV Max got removed from the team because of, like... I don't know, he was violent with Sword. I don't even know what came out of that, man. The coach was literally benched. He literally... CV Max was benched. CV Max was benched. No, it was in preparation of this. This the drama happened for this worlds. And IG went into semifinals of worlds looking strong. The, the coach was benched. Fuck seventy. Doran wasn't good 2019. Tell you he was better than Sword. All right.
I'm going to take it from here. The Shy went into the series versus FPX playing his standard range top laner style. Win in game number one to counter Renekton. Vlad top blind in game number two. Lucian top to counter GP the in Kale. game number oh, three. The and Kale. Kale top into GP in game number four. The difference between his effectiveness in this series and in the LPL though, was that FPX made a point of sending multiple people to constantly attack the Shy's lane. Fucking Teams were no people. longer letting the Shy play out 1v1. Fucking FPX would people. consistently send and as many people as possible into the top lane Don't to punish TM, the Shy's over aggressive playstyle. IG would enter game four down one to two, but battled back into a winning position after early game. Oh, the no. game looked like it would be a free win for IG, but on a Baron push around 25 minutes, the Shy completely griefed his Kale ulti, placing it on his support Valen and instantly causing him to die. The Shy followed up this in with another random death around 29 minutes, where he simply gets caught mid lane once again. Still, IG maintained a good game state and walked up mid to siege mid inhibitor around 33 minutes. All it would take was one good fight and IG could end the game and force love Sosa. And that's where tragedy <laughs> struck once again. The Shy would go on to get caught a third time, failing to use his KL ulti or his flash, losing his team the game instantly. And just like that, the run was over. The Shy and IG were eliminated from Worlds 2019. At this point, I was still a massive fan of the Shy. I believe that the Shy was already the greatest top laner of all time with the highest level of individual skill we had ever seen from any top laner in the history True. of the game. It didn't matter to me that he didn't have a good 2020 spring. I put all the blame on Puff and Southwind. I thought those guys were bad and the Shy couldn't carry those bums. I gave the Shy a pass for the 2020 midseason cup where he ended up going 2 and 18 individually while IG got 0 3 and kicked out of the tournament. I didn't even care when the Shy got swept by LGD in the first round of summer playoffs. It wasn't until the third game of the regional gauntlet where I realized that the Shy had become what I feared most, the most disgusting inter in the history of professional League of Legends. One thing you should understand is that I went into this game with a positive mindset. Oh, you see, no. this was one of the first games oh, no. that I had ever watched live on my stream featuring the Shy. I wanted to show everyone why I love this player and why I thought he was the greatest in the entire world. And you know what I got? An absolutely disgusting 1 and 10 AD Kennen performance. Maybe one of the worst things I've ever seen. Let me show you a little bit of it. All right, so this is the first play. You know, this one was a little bit unlucky. I mean, the Shy is going for a gank, but TP is really broken and people had it super early back in the day. Rookie didn't have anywhere to TP himself. The Shy flashes forward and misses his Q. It's pretty ugly, but I guess I'll accept it. You know, everyone makes mistakes and the Shy is a human being after all. I'm not going to say that this is the beginning of something horrible necessarily. And if you look at this, the Shy is just getting four man dove. I mean, what can he actually do here? Yeah, this is definitely not the Shy's fault. I mean, maybe it is just an unlucky game. Maybe I'm misremembering a little bit. Surely he won't do anything with his teleport that's coming up in three seconds. I mean, the Shy is only level five. Oh my God, he's teeping back to the turret. He just saw four people in his lane. Oh no. Oh, he's just dead again. Okay, this one was a little bit of an intentional feed, but I can understand it. He thought that his team would be able to have his back. Okay, this is just weird from the Shy. I mean, why is he trading autos with the red but Kindred? I mean, I feel like he's just gonna die again. Oh my God, the Shy, please. You're supposed to be the GOAT. What are you doing? Okay, the Shy has finally recovered. Let's see how he establishes dominance in the side lane. Oh my God, that is, that's pretty bad. That's pretty bad. He had Blade of the Ruin King on Kennen playing versus Volibear with Black Cleaver and he died 1v1 in the side lane. Oh, oh, this is tough from the Shy. And what is happening on the minimap? The Shy, what are you doing? Why are you still fighting? You're down two levels now. You've died twice 1v1 to the Volibear. He built a Black Cleaver in Ninja Tabby. Please stop fighting him. Hey, he has no one on this side of the map and no vision at all, but I guess he's like suicide split pushing at this point. Also, what is he building? I'm looking at his inventory. He has a pickaxe, but then he also has daggers. He has a blade of the ruined king already. What could he possibly be building? I mean, this is just, this looks like it's intentional. I mean, I guess we'll see. We'll, we'll see about his next teleport to see if he really is attempting to lose the game. Wait, he died off screen. What could be going on here? 
Okay, nice. We have a replay where the shy is TPing in. This is how he died? <laughs> okay, report him. Okay, report him. He's just griefing on stage. Still don't know what he's buying. I mean, I hope it's not anything too disgusting. I mean, he has Blade of the Rune King already. He probably needs PD like everyone else, but this pickaxe is really bothering me. I don't know what he could be purchasing at this point. Oh, it's a rapid fire cannon. <laughs> He's going rapid fire cannon cannon in a match that determines whether or not you move on or lose your tournament life. He's just trading autos over the wall, he gets arrowed. And I guess it's fine. Looked ugly, but I can accept it. Still not good. I mean, I'm pretty sure he's just into the entire game at this point. He has nine out of his team's 15 deaths. When have you seen somebody die this much before? Okay, at this point, he's into the game, but I still want to know, why the fuck is he buying IE? Rapid fire cannon IE. I have never seen this cannon build before, and I will never see this cannon build again. What the fuck is he actually doing in this game? I'm starting to care less about the 010 and more about what the fuck he has in his inventory right now. And this wasn't just a one-off. The Shy became a consistent inter. He would die 1v1 in the worst ways imaginable, no matter how much CS he had. It's hard for me to convey how bad he really was. So instead, I will show you some of my favorite disgusting the Shy hit moments, and you can be the judge for yourself of what type of player he was between 2020 summer and 2023 summer. Like, how about this game, where the Shy is playing Anivia top for no reason into Flandre's Vladimir and gets down 20 CS from pure 1v1 laning alone. He is doing McLaren Anivia walls live on the LPL stage. Somebody ban him. Well, hopefully it was useful later on. Oh, never mind. He's actually just under 200 CS at 29 minutes. He is 0-3 and provided nothing for his team. Why the f did he pick Anivia? What I want you to do is tell me what the f the Shy was thinking at this moment. <laughs> Why does he E into the whole enemy team? He doesn't throw a Q. He doesn't try to knock them up. He would just E into the whole enemy team, bro. This is game three versus top esports. These are supposed to be two of the best teams in all of the LPO. What the f is he doing? <laughs> is there anything I even need to say about this? He is playing broken Cassante in spring of 2023 and getting solo killed by Scion. Look at this play. What the f is he doing, bro? How the f is this guy a pro player, bro? I, it makes no sense. Bro. The shy was just so trash for so long. And I guess we can watch Wayward get in on the action as well. <laughs> Oh, I mean, everyone loves to flame Wayward, but even Wayward was able to solo kill the Shy when he was on his inting arc. Like, look at this. Completely outplayed. What an incredible fraud. I mean, the Shy was picking Nidalee top with Divine Sunderer, losing to top esports in 22 minutes. Okay, finally, the Shy is in a matchup where he will definitely not get solo killed. I mean, he's playing Mordekaiser versus the Dwa and finally, you know I needed to save the best for last. Look at the forbidden the shy combo. The flash into E into the wall, into the missed Q and missed R. That is who the shy was from 2020 <laughs> until 2023. By some miracle or act of God, the shy ended up qualifying to Worlds 2023, where I was convinced that he was gonna show everyone who he had been in the LPL for the last four years. And in that world final, the shy completely ran it the f down. He went one in 16 over three games, and it was possibly the worst world final that we have ever seen from any top laner in history. And then he took a break from competitive play and he plays Minecraft, so. That's the story of the shy. <laughs> nice. Nice. Good video.